every, everybody for, for coming here today. The microphone. Yeah. <laughs> I am really, really delighted to introduce a very good friend of mine, my rabbi, Rabbi Yoram Dahan. And Rabbi Dahan's topic this afternoon is called Secrets of Creation, where Torah, science, and creation comes to life, and he will provide coded knowledge through the Hebrew Holy writings. Connecting the dots on 5,780 years of Torah, Judaism, history, code, and divine secrets. Rabbi Dahan is the head of Kolel Abba Israel, San Diego. He's a Torah scholar, Talmud, author, teacher, and a speaker. He is deeply involved in teaching Torah, Kiru, Zionism, and Judaism to hundreds in San Diego and thousands around the world. He has written and published several books highlighting the divine Torah codes, teachings, secrets, and the depth of our holy Hebrew language. He applies a very unique method of teaching with diverse topics, including Torah, biblical events, Kabbalah, Kabbalah, Zohar, science, medicine, technology, and current events, and their direct correlation with the Torah. Rabbi Dahan is also involved in several Jewish advocacy programs and organizations. He writes and distributes weekly Devar Torah, Torah teachings in the US, Mexico, and Israel. Join his partners in Torah weekly classes at the Jewish Community Center in La in San Diego on Tuesday nights. And with that, I'm delighted to have Rabbi Dahan. Thank you, Fry. I want to first and foremost uh, thank you all for being here. And I want to thank the uh, uh, partners in Torah Foundation, the Shabbat Project, San Diego Foundation, and of course the JCC for hosting us today. It is truly an honor to be here, and I'm humbled to have the opportunity to share some of what I'm learning for the past many years in, uh, in the more of a life form as we do every week on Tuesday at the JCC. So first and foremost, oh, David, first and foremost, we all have to understand something. You know, I'm going to say a lot of things through this class that might shock you in a sense, but not in a bad way. Just give you an extra knowledge that comes from what we call both our Torah, the written Torah, our oral Torah, and what we call also the mystical Torah, which is the Zohar written 2,000 years. So as we know, in our world, we have what we call the Jewish count. The Hebrew Jewish count is a calendar that started with the creation of Adam, which today we're holding at 5,780 years to our world. You know, Genesis, Bereshit, the word Bereshit, as you notice, is a very interesting word to begin with. You know, when God's created the world, it says Bereshit bara Elohim et. God first created it. When everything that has to do with bara, when you do a bara, when you say bara, that means you're creating something out of nothing. When you say yatzel, that you build something out of something. For an example, if I wanted to build the table, that means I have to have wood, I have to have glue, I have to have nails, whatever the case may be. But when we came to our world, we must understand that there is no division between science and Torah. Many scientists today will tell you that the world exists million years. Some hundred million, some fifty million, some you know, few hundred thousand. There's all kinds of decision and guesstimation. Now, something very interesting, the Torah, the Zohar will teach us, by the way, the Zohar, just so we understand a little bit about the mystic, the Kabbalah as we know it, it was a book that was given to us by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and his son, they were after the second destruction of the second temple. They basically were, as we know, hidden in a cave in Kiin, which is northern Israel, for 13 years. And the angel Raziel and Eliyahu and Avi, Elijah, came to them and taught them the secrets of the Torah. 2,000 years ago, remember, they're sitting in a cave, and they would teach us that there is seven continents. I don't know if you know about science, just found out literally 500 years ago or so that there is three continents, right? Columbus went on his way. Of course, you know, Columbus, by the way, also has a Jewish heritage. And they found three continents. Later on, 100 and some years after that, they found another continent. The fifth was found about 200, and the last one about 130, the last two. 
Now here's a, a rabbi that sits in a cave and teaching us without any spaceships, any sort of, some sort of uh, you know, boats or anything. He's hidden in a cave because he was in fear for his life. The Romans wanted to kill him and his son. And he tells us that, listen, there are seven continents. Now, I don't know if you know, but when God created the world, our world was the only world that willing to accept the Torah. Before that, God created a thousand worlds. The word Aleph, which means 1,000, is the first letter of the Hebrew. Aleph means Aleph, a thousand worlds. Every galaxy that we see today, and we have Hubble going out there and spaceships, and we see a lot, thousands of galaxies, right? By the way, the entire galaxies of the Torah is hidden already and noted to us in the Gemara. In the Gemara, if you go to what we call Masechet Brachot 32b, if you go to the tracket of blessings, page 32, second page, you'll see that there is a calculation of all the galaxies that got created. It comes to one to the point zero zero nineteen zeros, the power of 19, which is there's no such number. Bereshit. What's Bereshit? So you know the word Bereshit, if you take the word the Torah, if you notice, it does not have any vowels, it doesn't have any commas, period, asterisks, nothing. It's written in a way that you can really take every letter, every word, and repurpose it. The reason the Torah is written without it, so we understand, for example, if you take the word Bereshit, Bereshit, it has the word Aleph Betishrei, Rosh Hashanah. That's when Adam was ready, in Aleph Betishrei. That's why we all judged on Aleph Betishrei, Rosh Hashanah, right? We start the days before Yom Kippur. Bereshit is also Bet Rashid. There are two, there is this world and the world to come. There's two beginnings. Bereshit is Saberit, do the Brit Milah. Bereshit is Yere Shabbat, keep the Shabbat. Bereshit is Eshet and Eve, <coughs> marriage, husband and wife. By the way, just so you know, in Hebrew, when you ever read the word Isha, in Hebrew today, what we call Hebrew Safruti, all the authors today and media, I thought they all make a huge mistake. The right woman, Aleph Yud Shin He, which is a huge mistake. Aleph Yud Shin He means her husband. Haish yeah. Shela, it's a male, it's not a female. So if you open today, if you look at any magazines, and especially in the news in Israel, there's a lot of stories. You always see, they're talking about a, fe a female, but it's, it's actually a male form. Isha, that means her men. Haish Shela. When God created men and women, as we know, Adam and Chava, they were what we call Siamese twins. Katuf, Zacharu Nekeva bara Adam, and they called it Adam. Originally, they were one unit. Only when Hashem separated them, they became then Ish and Isha, right? Bereshit bara Eloimet. So the word Bereshit is really encompasses entire mitzvot of the Torah, just so you know, 613 mitzvot. Everything in Bereshit. Now, what do I mean by that? If we take the word, for example, bar. Bar means the sun. All the mitzvot of sun. If you take the word Bereshit, what is sun? You know, what do we do to the first boy that was born? By any boy, we do a brit milah. When? Eight. At the eighth day. Why eighth day? Something amazing happened. First, the Torah says uh, the boy has to have at least one Shabbat in his life. It's holy, right? Yerai Shabbat. You know, Bereshit is the Hashem even stopped everything on Shabbat. He never said that it was done. He said that it stopped, meaning that there is for us to do more. Right? So we see that the Ben, if you look at the word Bereshit, it's an acronym. Ben Rishon Achare Shmona Yamin Timol. First son after eight days, you should circumcise. Then we have what we call the redemption of the son in 30 days. So the Bereshit, if we take the word Esh, which is, you know, there are four elements to creation. But before that, Hashem says, Bereshit para Elohim Et. What God created, Et, by the way, is Aleph through Tav, the entire Hebrew letters. You know, the Hebrew letters, God created everything by words, right? He never said that he did something, he just says, Vayomer Hashem. There were 10 Ma'amarot. The Gemara will teach us that God spoke 10 times and the entire world was created in six days. Ed is Aleph through Taf. The entire Torah is written with those letters. Everything that we have the power to say come from Hebrew. Even in English, in Yiddish, in German, they say that until the Tower of Babel that happened after Noah's flood, 
The whole world spoke Hebrew. Everybody spoke Hebrew. Only after they wanted to go against God, it says, Babel Levalbeli, mixed the Hebrew language for them, so they did not understand each other. The Zohar will say, this is the other languages that was given to the world, 70 languages were given to the world. From that moment on, every language came from the Hebrew. There's many, many, many words in English that it's Hebrew. Many, it sounds like Hebrew, it's even used the same Hebrew. I have a list here I'll be happy to share with you after. But et is Aleph Trutav. Something amazing else happened. Et, if you rearrange the letter, right? Remember, we said, what's the Torah? Because there's no vowels, there is actually, they say 70 facets to every letter. Right, you heard of this 70 facets? There are 70 explanations to each word. In the Bara, it speaks that even King Solomon no 101 explanation to each word. He was the wisest of men. A king that became a king when he was 12 years old, and God's appeared to him and he says, what can I give you? You are the son of David, you're gonna be the king. King Solomon says, let me know how to judge the people correctly. He did not ask for PlayStation, Rolex, <laughs> he wanted to be a good judge, because you know, he'd be judging the entire world. There were 10 kings to the world. King Solomon was one of them. Pharaoh was one of them. Ahasuerosh was one of them. There is a lot of you know kings that rule the entire world. So when we take the first et, what's et? As we say, Aleph from Taf. It's a combination of all the words that exist in the world. The Gemara will teach us that the Torah actually existed 974 generations before creation of our world. Which is very interesting. We got the Torah. Moshe Rabbeinu received the Torah on Mount Sinai. The year was 2,448 to our count. And he is the 26th generation to the world. So 26 plus 974, 1,000. There's a joke in Israel. It's from the Torah, by the way. They say that the guy was standing at the call, at the Kotel, I'm sorry. And he says, God, God, Hashem, please answer. He says, my son, yes, what can I do for you? So he says, Hashem, excuse me, Hashem, how long is a thousand years? Hashem says, one minute in my eyes. He says, how about a million dollars? He says, one penny. So the guy says, can I have a, a million dollar? God says, one minute. <laughs> one thousand years in God's eyes is one day in our life. Imagine this for a second. Our neshama, what's the word neshama? Our soul, right, per se, is, has the word Hashem in it. It's given to us by Hashem. So in order to have the neshama, we must have what we call a kli to receive. Kli is a vessel, right? What's a kli? It's also an acronym for Kohen Levi Israel. We are the only nation in the world that were willing to receive the Torah. The 26th generation is really the completion of the 1,000th generation in order to receive it. That's why Aleph was never used, the first letter in the Torah. It's Bet, but it takes two, right? You say, one, why do we got the Torah in the month of Sivan? Sivan is the month of twins, the Chavruta. You cannot learn Torah alone. Or you cannot even do science alone. You cannot be a doctor alone. Every profession in the world, you have to have either the subject and the matter, right? You have to have somebody to give, somebody to receive. Hashem wants to give us more. So, the Rashid Barayloim Et, what's it? We said, we can rearrange the letter. If you put the Yutaf at the beginning and the Aleph at the end, you have the word Ta. Ta means a cell. The Rashid Barayloim, God created the cell. You know, a cell today, every cell in the world, what we call DNA, right? Every cell has what we call the two helices that is like two, almost like Sulam Yaakov. It's described as almost two helices that has connector, right? Every DNA connects. The sequencing of all DNA in the world is at the distance of the letters of God. Sequencing of Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey, which is every 10, right? The Hebrew letters also as numbers. When you see the movie, The Matrix, just so you know, it's two Jewish guys that learned the Zohar from here, from San Diego. And they say you're not allowed to learn the Zohar unless you really have the basis of the 40 years, not per se 40 years old, but the basis. You have to know the entire Torah, the Gemara, all the Halachot, all the Shulchan Aruch, all the big books in order to get to the secret. They actually made the movie The Matrix, and later on, they actually something went awry in their mind and they became women. I don't know if you know that, but they're here from San Diego. 
they discovered the codes of what we call you know, before, you know, 2,000 years ago, that is each letter is a, is a number. Like Aleph is one, right? Bet is two, Gimel is three, and so on and so forth. So if you take the DNA, and don't trust me, ask for it by Google, every DNA has a sequencing of the letters of God. You would have a, the signature of creation. Every DNA in the world will have the distances between each component that connects the two bridges in the distance of 10, the distance of 5, distance of 6, and distance of 5, which is in Gematria 26, right? Yud, hey, vav, hey is 26. Yud is 10, hey is 5, vav is 6, and hey is 5. So you have 26. Very interesting, the word God in English also 26. G O D G seven O fifteen D is four twenty six coincident there is no such thing. I'll tell you a story about my dear wife. I met her in Cannes, <laughs> south of France, twenty six years ago. Thank God. You know the word Cannes is a very interesting word. As both our kids, Chloe and Ness. Now her the city. Now those uh, no coincidence. Our social security and my military thing has the exact same numbers. What? What are the numbers? <laughs> so we say that there is no coincidence. Even the word coincidence in Hebrew, it's called mikre. The Hashem kara, it's happened by Hashem. Make no mistake. So the word et is really define the creation. What's a top? What's a cell? If you write DNA in Hebrew, it's the letter Adonai, right? DNA. Aleph, Dalet, Nun, Yud. I don't mind, DNA. There's no coincidence. They say everything that in the languages comes from the Hebrew. All the foreign languages come from Hebrew. Make no mistake. Even the Chinese will tell you, you know, China, if you look at the book of Noah, which is the flood story, literally, after the flood, we have the 70 nation listed in the Torah. Chinese is listed there. Chapter 10, verse 18. I'll tell you, see me, and the Iraqi, and the Persian, and the, uh, all the nation, the, 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 um, the Egyptian, everybody, the Greeks, everybody's there. So the Chinese will tell you that they learn from the Torah, the entire Torah, if you, anybody knows a little bit about Chinese medicine and everything that has to do with the needles. Yeah. They have exactly 365 needles that goes into the arms, most important part, where the tefillin goes in the arm and in the head. And they will write in their own book that they learned the Torah from the men of the 10th generation. And speaking of Noah. Because Noah had three kids, Shem, Ham, and Yafet, right? Shem is the Jews. Ham is the Arabs. And Yafet is the Christians, later on. That's why we say anti-Semite is anti-Shem, against Shem, right? What Shem? Hashem, right? We got the Neshama from Hashem. Hashem put in us the ability to be alive. You know, the, the neshama itself, as we said, we go back to the first etat, the matter. What's etat, right? Any cell in the body, any doctor will tell you that you can create a whole human from one cell. The entire genetic makeup of a person is in one cell. Now, cell is very interesting how it's built. As 72% liquid, 28% matter, right? Our world, it's also, every cell is a circle, by the way. The entire creation is in circle. You'll never find a square apple or a square orange, right? Uh, you know, everything that has to do with the seed, with the ta, is circle. The world has 72% water, 28% matter. No coincidence. The world, as we know, turns at the speed of 24,000 miles per day. 1,000 miles to be exact and four miles per hour speed. And we walking through the speed of light, which, you know, there's two speeds in the world that we can really measure today. It's called ultrasound. The speed of light and the speed of sound. That's how they create ultrasound. It's the only power that has no radiation. That's what they can use on pregnant women to see what it is. It's called Oracle, the software, or in call. Or light. Call voice. By the way, the entire technology of the world is already here. It's never been 
brought from any other place. Everything that you look, Moshe Rabbeinu had the first tablet. I downloaded everything from the clouds of glory. <laughs> iCloud, right? They had everything that has to do with the Oracle. You know, the iPad is the Afford, the Hoshen. You know, the high priest had what we call the Afford. The breastplate has the lights and letters. You ask, you ask. The Oracle gives you answers. Many of the technology existed. You know, there's technology that we don't even have yet. But we know there is a guy, have you heard of William Shepner? Beam me up, Scotty. You heard of that? Yeah. Right? What's beam me up, Scotty? It's time trouble. In the Torah, we just noticed Abraham Avinu used this technology by Ya'atek Abraham. Abraham jumped from place to place in a speed of matters that you can even see him. By the way, when Mr. Spock, also Jewish, goes like this, <laughs> you know, he's a Kohen. He's yeah. Gregata Kohanim. When you hear the big kahuna, it's the Kohen Gadol, right? right? When you go like this for the surfers, who surfs here? What is this? Shakabram, right? You know what it is? No. They call the good surfer the big kahuna, right? Yeah. This is the comments from the Kohen. The Kohen take a little bit of the wheat in order to do the mincha. Mm -hmm. He grabs, and that's called comments. The big kahuna call it Shakabram. But anyway, let's continue. So the ta really is the essence of creation. And then we know there is what we call the six days of creation. So technically you understand, there is a big discussion in the Kabbalah about whether the world exists millions of years or only the 5,780. We concluded with that fallacy. Yes, the world did exist before our world. There's many worlds. We said 1,000 worlds. When you see galaxies that completely lifeless, there's a world that did not want to accept the Torah. There's a world that was burned down, so to speak, and they're just floating in midair. The Kabbalah will teach us, again, this is before Columbus, NASA, all the spaceships, everything. The Torah will tell us that the world is hanging in midair, al blima. Blima means there's nothing holding it. Right? And the people around it will be walking upside down. And the color of the skin will be, depends on the air they breathe. NASA just discovered all that 75 years ago. Today, NASA is actually going by the Gemara on many, many, many events. There is, a, for example, when laser was created, NASA did not know how to harness this power. A very famous story. You know, there is a uh, King Solomon, it was known before, but King Solomon wrote to us that he built the entire temple, the first temple, without any metal. None of the stone had to, we cannot use metal in building the temple, right? It's, uh, it's halach. And he had a, a, a worm called the Tolat Shamir, a worm, a little worm, that omits laser-like. You just point it in the right direction, and this worm cuts everything. And he had to get it from Ashmedai. He was the king of the demons. He had it. That's the whole story. We'll get it to it later. But King Solomon knew how to harness this power. And it's rich about this. It's a like it says that, you know, in order to keep that, you have to put it in lead. Lead, you know, is the heaviest and most powerful, most dense metal. That's why when you go get an extra, what do they put on you? Lead. Because nothing goes to even the radiation is blocked by lead. Most of it, is, you know, it goes direct. That's why when you go, if you've been to military, uh, you know, paratroopers like myself or any other, when they shoot at you, they give you all a vest, a bulletproof vest, lead. From them. Shlomo Amelech knew how to harness this power of laser. So, one, of, you know, there were many Jewish NASA, you know, especially after the Holocaust that came to America, and the people that came after the First World War, they developed the laser and they didn't know how to harness it in NASA. So, one of them was what we call the Datiloni. Half Dati, half Hiloni, he goes to Yom Kippur, you know. And he tells his friends about this power that they developed, the laser. And the friend says to him, Rabbi, you don't know how to harness it. He says, try lead. He said, what do you mean lead? And it was religious, Rabbi. He said, yeah, that's what the Gemara says. You can, you can harness it with lead. He said, you've tried everything. Obviously, you haven't been successful. Try lead. So to speak, the guy went back to Nasa and said, let's try. And exactly what happened. They will keep it. And he says, it's from the Torah. It says lead is the only one that can harness this power. Every technology today in the world 
it's in this world, remember, it's not come from any other place but this world. We're just now discovering it. So let's continue back to Genesis. By the way, so we said Hashem created men and women, Eshet and Ish, right? The word Bereshit has the word Ish, right? And Esh, right? By the way, men and women has the component of what we call, the man is Aleph Yud Shin, and the woman is Aleph Shin He. If you rearrange the letters, that mean C, like C for men, heights, you can reach, achieve heights. Isha, Si'a, so you can reach even higher heights. When God created man, this is Vayitzer, meaning I created two, Yetzer Ara, Yetzer Ato, there's two Yud, right? But when it comes to a woman, he says Vayiven, he gave her extra Bina. Women have intuition that men don't have. Always listen to your wife. Believe me when I say, once I did it, it cost me a lot. There's a reason, even in our parasha, last parasha, God says, listen to Sarah, what are you arguing with me? Just once? All the time. Uh, of course, a woman that has... It depends how long you want to stay married. You know, there's a stipulation. <laughs> it has to be a woman that understands and believes in Hashem. Right? If your wife says, come on, let's go gamble, not a good My father always says, only gamble when you can afford to lose. Right? I always says to my children, never gamble. But anyway, let's continue. So when Hashem created Adam and Eve, the Torah says that, of course, He created them, as we call back-to-back, Siamese, and they were facing the other direction. And that was the first surgery, because you know, they said that God gave all the animals to see for Adam if he can have any mate. Because you know, everything created before Adam, right? The entire week, six days, was before Adam. Adam was created on the ninth day of Friday, okay? And that moment, this ninth hour, was the entire story of everything that happened to Adam in all before you know, the Gan Eden, everything has to do with paradise, everything has to do with the first surgery in the world, you know, the Torah says that Hashem put Adam in the full anesthesia, and he basically separated him. When you hear today people say that God took a rib out of Adam, it's a big mistake, it's a Christian thing, just so you know. Adam lakach tzela, tzela means a side, he separated the two of them. Okay? That's why even Adam says to Kadu Baruch ah, finally this is a woman, this is a right. This is the why I should have done it in the first place. You know, everything was created. Let's say the first day. What Hashem says: Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim ve'et haaretz. God created the heaven and earth. Right? Remember, we said before there's a lot of other worlds already out there. So here's another planet. It's no coincidence that it's in the Milky Way. Right? Eretz zavat chalav udvash. Mm-hmm. Right? The Milky Way, also known as the land of milk. Right? We are the ninth planet. There is eight of them, it's like the menorah. Okay? And we are the one that's above all of them, if you notice. So on the first day, God says, It was chaos in the world, in our world. Meaning, what's the world? They said that basically, there was one giant planet, but it wasn't mixed. Everything was mixed in it, right? Tohu Vavo means chaos. Later on, the Gemara will teach us more about Tohu Vavo. And then Hashem first, on the first day, thing He created the light. He brought light into our world. You know, light, or, is also air in Hebrew. In English, I'm sorry, avir, right? Or light, but it's also the same level as avir. Hakadosh Baruch Hu brought to this world the light. It's called the first light that was brought to our world. It's called the concealed light, or haganuz. It's not the same light we see today. Why? When do we have the creation of the moon and the sun? On the fourth day, right? Yom Ravi. On the fourth day, that means there was three days without sun and moon. What is this light? Where was the light? So if we take three days, it's 24 hours a day, right? By the way, 24 is no coincidence. 24 is also how many books in the Torah? The Tanakh, the Bible is the entire Torah, written Torah. There is what we call five books of Torah, Torah Moshe. We have the Nun, which is Nevi'im. There is eight, the prophets. And Ktuvim, there is 11, so 24. The Torah, is, as we know, is a parable to gold. Torah is Zahab. 
That's why I care at the world the best one is 24. Now, no coincidence why the world is also has 24,000 miles a day rotation. Everything that has to do with the holiness is 24. Everything that has to do with material has six dimensions. If you take any object in the world, no matter what it is, you hold a phone, me, a book, any object has six sides. You have north, east, west, and south, right? That's where the news come from. The word acronym news is north, east, west, and south. That's where all the news come from. Then you have above and below, right? Those are the elements of what we call material, homel. Material is all six. Seventh is holy, Shabbat. Eight is above Shabbat. Eight is the only number that has value that never stops. Shmone in Hebrew means neshama, same letters. A neshama never stops, never dies. Our body, Adam, came from Adama. We came from the ground. We go back to Adama. Our neshama has five parts. Five parts, what we call nefesh, ruach, neshama, chaya, beyechida. Each portion is corresponding to everything in our body. Everything that we do, see, breathe, eat, all the five senses are component of this neshama, this part of neshama. You know, they say that when you get, get up in the morning, you have to bless that you woke up from the dead. You know, Berkot HaShachar, the, the blessings of the morning, first and foremost, you have to slowly, slowly sit on the bed, and you have to say 12 words. There's There was a big convention in Switzerland, says, well, I don't know why people keep you know, fainting. One rabbi says, just don't get up fast. Why? It takes 12 seconds for your body, all system to calibrate. Your eyesight, your hearing, your blood, everything. So when you sit on the bed, you allow your body to be completely synchronized. Only then, you can do your wish and you love your diamond, you can do away with your brachot, and you pray that thank you Hashem for waking me up from the dead. So you know, our neshama is the component that lives every night. And go and record everything that we've done during the day. <laughs> Many people will tell you that passed away, and there's thousands of them, had what we call clinical death. You know, clinical death, according to halacha, is not real death. There's a very big uh, discussion in Israel about it many years ago. Because some Rabbanim believe that clinical death is death. Some of them said no. The one that was said no were actually correct. Clinical death means just your mind stops, not your body. Not any of the components of your body. Your mind just doesn't send the right signal. There was a case in Israel in Hadassah Hospital, a pregnant woman that was three months pregnant had a clinical death. Some of the doctor wanted to do away with her. The Rabbanin insisted never, don't do it. She ended up giving birth to a healthy boy after six months. Completely, everybody thought she was dead. So just so you know, luckily, you're not allowed to chazra chalila, pull the plan. When the Torah says, Lot Yotzach, the Ten Commandments, you know, there's Ten Commandments, a very, very interesting structure of those commandments. When God says, Lot Yotzach, by the way, if you look at the scrolls um, at the Chumash, you know, for art scroll, there's a lot, we call English, is Hebrew for beginners. If you look at the Ten Commandments, the, the Parashat Yitro, it says, Lo Yertzach, but the English says, you shall not kill. It's not the same. You're allowed to kill. If somebody comes to kill you, you must kill them. Abba Lorgecha, Hashem Lorgo, right? But you're not allowed to murder. Nobody can murder. Not even a doctor. A doctor can come to you and say, you have three months? Just thank you, I'll see you in hell, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to tell you many, many, many times. There's, a, there's actually a lot of doctors can never tell you how many. Nobody can tell you except Hashem when time is right. I can tell you from my own experience, my brothers from Rafat, they gave him three weeks. He said to them, I believe in Hashem and I don't have a grandkids, grandkids yet, so I'll wait. 14 and a half years later. Mm -hmm. The power of will and, and amuna. The Mara says, doctors have a good place in hell when they start predicting death. So when God created everything, everything originally was not supposed to expire. Adam and Eve were putting in heaven. If you read carefully in the book of Bereshit, it says that Gan Eden was in the land of Israel. And it was the four rivers that surrounding it. It says, Hashem says, Right, he put them in the heaven. 
And I want to go back to the light. The first thing that Hashem brought light, what's light? Or, you know, it, the world started on 25 of Elul, six days, and then it was ready on Rosh Hashanah, right? Every time there is the word ko, haf aleph in the Torah, which means 25 in Hebrew, is holy of holies. Make no mistakes, whatever you see, like in the Katakoanim, in the priestly blessing, there is ko, in everything that has to do with ko amar Hashem, Sarah says ko, Moshe says ko, whenever you see ko, it's a very, very deep understanding of what's going about to happen in holiness. So the first three days, as we said, there was no light from the sun and the moon. So if we take three days, times 24, 72. That means half day, half night. 36 light, 36 darkness. Well, we light the menorah every Hanukkah, right? We have what we call eight candles and the shamash. But we are obligated to do one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight. It's exactly 36. Two, and remind us of the concealed light that was taken from the world. For the first three days, until the sun came, there was no light of regular on Wednesday. So when we do the Hanukkah, we remind us of the first three days that Hashem did chesed with us with the light in the world. You know, the first thing that Hashem did, as we say, on Monday, is separated between water and water. Originally, as we said, the whole world was one mixed component of everything that we have today in our world. And Hashem says, Vayerev, Vayibokel. First it was Me'orav. Erev comes from the word mixed. Bokel, Levaker, to see what needs to be fixed. Right? When you come to visit somebody. When you do Mikur Cholim, don't eat their food. See what they need. Ask them, what can I do for you? You see, you Levaker, you look around and say, ah, what needs to be done? That's the Bokel. Like in the Arab, we don't see good, right? At night, can you see good? No, unless you have idea of good, you know, night vision. But in reality, it's very hard to see at night. That's why even you cannot allow to do the feeling until the sun comes, you know, today, I think 5.26 in the morning, so you can see after the, 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 the Hanets. But at night, it's not <laughs> rough, it's mixed. Now, Shem first separated, they say that there was a fight between the water below and the water above. Shamayim, what Shamayim? Shamayim, there is water up there. Right? The word Shamayim is sky. If you look at the sky, what do we see during the day? Blue. Blue. It's not really blue. What's the sky? Earth. It's actually very dark. But the reflection of the sun on the water, if you pick up the water, you look at the ocean, you think it's blue, turquoise, all kinds of colors, right? Gray sometimes. But if you go and pick up the water in your hand, it's always clear. It's never any color, right? It's only really what we call an optical illusion. So when Hashem created the, for the world, in the first day, He separated between the water below and the water above. The second, by the way, because there were war, that's when hell was created. The Gemara will tell us it was on Monday. Later on, on Tuesday, Hashem never said on Monday, that's good. Tov. There's no tov. Tov means good. Tuesday, Hashem separated, and that's where it comes, and many scientists never realized that. You know, when God separated the Adama, the Yabasha, from the ocean, He says, Vayi Yabasha, one land, not seven continents. What happened with the seven continents? So the first, until the Mabul, the flood, the whole world was one unit. When the flood came, the Torah says that the water from above and the water from below start fighting again. And what we call the titanic shifting of plates happened, the earthquake in the world, and it says that the water <laughs> boiling, where did the water come from boil? Lava, the magma. Then the world broke into seven pieces. There's a professor in Australia that went around, he learned the Zohar, he never understood that. He said, wow, we, never, we thought it was always seven. He said, no. So he went over all the edges of each continent, he saw that the same rocks appear in different mm -hmm. plants and everything. But just so you know, until Noah, the world was one unit. When you have many scientists, if we take, logically, 100 scientists, now we ask them, how old is the world? Most likely you have 100 answers, right? You have 100 opinions, 100 scientists. Technically, 99 of them are wrong. There's only one answer, <laughs> right? Even that answer might not be the truth. 
Many scientists believe that the world exists a million and dinosaurs. Yes, there were dinosaurs in the world, there was everything. But when the world broke apart and God took the water out of the world after the 40 days of the flood of Noah, there is a car called Subaru. You heard of Subaru? Mm -hmm. Right? Subaru, by the way, is a group of stars called Kima. Kima is the stars. They have like five and one aside. The Gemara said that when Hashem wanted to drain the world, He removed the Kohav Kima and the water, you know, we did all the dry bones and everything that has to do with dinosaurs. That's why they find everything. There was no meteor hit the world and killed everybody and we started from, you know, evolution and all that thing. I have five minutes left. I wish I could have five hours with you. But, you know, we have a call up next door, so you're welcome to come every day, 10 to 4. I want to leave the floor open for some questions, but I want to finish with one thing. We, all of us, are part of Hashem. Hashem says, Betzelem Elohim He created us in His own image. We're capable of everything, good or bad. God says, I'm going to give you the good, and I'm going to give you the bad. Hashem says, choose the life. You know, Adam, originally, we're not supposed to die. Because only Hashem said to him, don't eat from the tree of knowledge. So you don't know bad. Because tree of knowledge was mixing the good and the bad. Until that moment, there was no bad. It exists, but we never needed it. We, today, are representing the first and foremost of the Jewish nation. When we go out there to the world, remember, you're not just you. We're all components of Hashem. We're all each other's grantors. We're all each other, reflection of each other, the land of Israel, the people of Israel, the Jewish people. And we must remember that the Tselem Elohim, we are in the image of God. Tselem is unlike what you think is a picture. Hashem has no image, no picture. When we say Hashem's hands, it's just for us to understand the awe of power of Hashem. But if you see today, Hashem, what we said, Hashem Bar Elohim La'asot, He created for us to continue to do. Deal with goodness. Promote yourself and Hashem and your children. Make sure your children understand what Judaism is all about. You are their heroes. You are the influence. When Hashem says Av and M, Av is the Aleph Bet, right? M, why M become M? M in the miracle code is 41. For the first 40 days, the baby in the womb is not conformed until 40 days. All the parts come together when it's 40 days. That's why M, 41. Only the 41, she's a mother. That's why mothers never said they're pregnant in the beginning. Because it's not ready yet. <laughs> right? So all of us here bring the represent of Hashem. Our word that I said, Neshama Hashem Natan. Remember, we're part of Hashem. There's a lot of great people amongst us, I know very well. There's a lot of great chesed and goodness and everything. And I want to leave the floor, as I said, and uh, first and foremost, I thank you for being here. If you have any questions, I'll be right. happy to answer. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. If I don't know, David will answer. Me? Anybody? So um, you just mentioned the uh, said Elohim Barai Tata. You mentioned that there are uh, the father, the mother, and Hashem. And Hashem. I did not mention that, but I'll, I'll agree with you, yes. Okay, so every entity has uh, three items in it, right? Component. You cannot have so, no. What's what? the question? Like, no, I, I don't think it's right for this. That one. Okay. By the way, each creation has four components. It's called earth, wind, fire, and water. Right? Each of them, each, come from ash. Right? We are the component of fire. Everything that has to do in the ground is earth, Adama. Everything that has to do with the ruach, right? That's what we call the animals. Everything that has to do with the fire, I mean the uh, water, it has to do with creation of other things. So every component in the world has these four elements. Your uh, remark, yes, when we create a child, there is Av and M and Hashem, right? There's mother, father, and God. Mm -hmm. We, the parents, give the component of what we need in order the, the body to have, and Hashem gives the nefesh, the ruach, and the shama. When He gives us that, then we'll be able to be alive. Without it, just another adult. Well, it's really Christianity. They say the Father, the Mother, and the Holy Ghost. What's the difference? So everything is based on the Torah, even Christianity. <laughs> Any 
any other questions? Yes. I'm puzzled by, I don't know how to express that. Yes. We are in the year 5780. Yes. Or 2019. So 100 years ago, it was 5680. Okay. So when do we have a difference in the range of time? Let's say 2000 years ago. When did the, the, the so range of Torah, time start shifting? Yeah, so the first day, that's a great question. He says, when do we know that the time started? The moment God says, <coughs> So the first day was on Sunday. From that we count, right? We have six day of creation. And then we have Shabbat. Then, for example, we'll say Adam was created on Aleph Bet Yisrael. That was the year one. We start zero, right? In Christianity, they go by 3760, right, below, right, before count. Us, for example, Abraham Avinu was born in 1948 to creation, of our own county. Hashem promised him, promised him the land of Israel. When do we get the land of Israel back? Yeah. His son, Yitzhak, was born in 2048. Hashem says to Abraham, your children will be 400 years in slavery. The year 2448, the people of Israel come out of Egypt. It's exactly 400 years. It was era of Pesach. It was Yitzhak Abinu was born on Pesach, 25th. I mean, the 15th of Pesach, to Tevva, which is Aviv, Gematria, spring. Calendar. When we went to Israel, for an example, it was 2488, 40 years after the Matan Torah. There's throughout the Torah. There's a lot of points of what we call calendar points for the Jewish accounts. What Rabbi said lately in Israel, Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky, one of the Gdolei Hador, his chatan and his chatan and his grandson is in the Chavuta, he says, Why you know, Chavuta? Yes. He says something interesting. He says, you know, because we are now at 5,780, that means technically the world is supposed to last only 6,000 years, right? Uh -huh. So we have 220 years left. But he says something interesting. He said that because we were, and this is from King Solomon, not him, he points out from King Solomon, because we were slaves for 210 years, we don't really hold 210 years. Mm -hmm. Meaning how much, how many years we have? Yeah. What, what year are we talking about? 365 days a year? I mean, how yes. are you comparing those years to this year? There is 365 days every year. No, there isn't. No, back then there wasn't. No, always. <laughs> When, when did they start counting 365 days a year? When Hashem said? When, in the Shana. Jewish calendar or in the Gregorian calendar? In the Jewish. You know, we are the only one that go by the moon and the sun. Why? Okay. Because we need to have every holiday on time. Okay, when, when we have a tower, how many? Well, I can answer you private because we have a Okay, fair enough. Thank you. We have a, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.